Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Uh, today, it has to do with this packaging that I got. And see, I'm like a little three-year-old. I get more excited about the packaging that something comes in than what's actually in the box. Because this thing has a great square shape to it. And I thought, how much fun would that be to gel print with? So, we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it into a pattern making tool for gel plate. I'm gonna cut bits of this off so that we can assemble them together and make some shapes. Cool thing about working with this is it went very flat, very easily, which made it really easy to cut compared to say cutting something that was round or circular. But I realized after I cut the first one, I love this shape so much, I wanted as many as I could get off of here. And it's extremely forgiving. It's not like all of these have to be the exact same height or anything at all like that. Now comes the fun part of putting these shapes together to build different shapes. Because these are a square shape and they can be smooshed down into a diamond shape or more of a trapezoid, you've got all sorts of options. So how you squeeze and push on these will determine what shapes you can put together. To get them to stick together, you need some kind of adhesive. Now, I'm using an ATG gun here just because it's, well, it's fast and it's more like double-sided tape in a dispenser where you don't have to peel any backing off of it. Is this the only kind of adhesive that you can use to do this? Heavens no. I say whatever you've got within arm's reach that will stick these things together, that's a great thing to use. Hot glue? Yes. Gel medium? You bet. Tacky glue? Absolutely. Elmer's school glue? You bet. Anything that's a glue and an adhesive, that will work. If you're using a dry adhesive like a double-sided tape or a really quick setting one like hot glue, these things will go into place and stay there quickly. If you're using something like a gel medium, you want to use something like a binder clip or say a clothespin just to keep things held together while it's drying. And since I'm not that patient, that's why I chose to use a dry glue as opposed to a wet one here. I had to laugh at myself as I was assembling this last shape. Not because of my geometric skills here and how I've organized it, but no, no. It's because to me, this stuff is feeling precious. I was being very careful and choosing wisely here because this would probably be the last shape that I would have enough of these pieces to build. As if this stuff was more valuable than platinum or gold, this cardboard to me was absolute treasure. And you bet next time I see some of this stuff show up in packaging, I am going to hang on to it because there are even more shapes that I'd like to try making. So let's make some prints with these things. I'm going to start by putting paint on the palette and then brayering it around. Now this process is extremely forgiving because like if you don't put enough paint on like what I did, you just simply add some more. No precision needed whatsoever to make gel prints. I'm going to start with the simplest shape, the basic square, and I'm going to repeat it all over this plate. You might notice that I've got a little bit of a shake or a wiggle to my hands as I'm doing this, and that's on purpose. I'm not pushing down very hard at all, but I am giving it that little bit of imprecise shake because that allows more of the paint to come up so that I can get more of the pattern in the print. It's also helpful to have something nearby to clean your brayer off on, that way none of the paint ever gets wasted. So there's what it looks like with just that square being repeated over and over again. But what else can we do here? Let's try some of the other shapes. You'll notice that I'm putting my hand on the top of it and giving it the shake, simply because this is a larger shape than just the little square. So I've got to get my whole hand on there to give it that shake so that I can get a bunch of that pattern to show up in the print by pulling up the paint from the plate. One of the questions that I get asked frequently is what kind of paper should you use for gel printing? Well, that's a very personal preference kind of thing. The first and most important thing about the paper is what kind of paper do you have? Because that's a lot of times the very best kind to use. And the other thing is how do you like the feel of papers? I like a heavier paper, so that's why I go with a 90 pound cardstock here. But some people like working on a thinner paper, something that's more like a tissue paper or deli paper because of what they want to do with their prints. It's not really a matter of right or wrong. It's really more a matter of what paper gives you the results that you want. So since I tend to do a lot of art journaling, mixed media kind of stuff, I like to work on that heavier paper. So it's a light cardstock, 90 pound. And if you're gonna say do a lot of fine detailed collage, then you might prefer working on something lighter, thinner, like tissue paper or deli paper. 
And for me, it doesn't matter what brand of cardstock I'm using, I tend to get whichever one gives me the best price for it. If you're just getting started gel printing, you might have a whole bunch of questions. And once you get the answers to those, it makes it so much easier to have fun making prints that you love. Like maybe you wanna know what, how the different paints behave on a gel plate, what you should and shouldn't use on it or do with it, and what can you do with all those prints? Well, I've got a page of resources for you over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com that can help you get answers to those questions. And we could see that pattern really clearly on the gel plate, but when I lifted it up, it doesn't stand out as much. I mean, you can see it, you know that it's there, but it didn't really jump out and pop like it did on a bunch of the other prints. So why did that happen? Well, that's because yellow is a lighter color. It's closer to white, which is the background, so there's not enough contrast to make it really stand up and go pop. This pink color, it's gonna be bright and strong enough that with the white background, there's gonna be enough contrast so that when I lift up the print, you're gonna be able to see that pattern a lot more clearly than when I did it with just the yellow. And that's simply because it's a stronger, brighter color. So far, you've seen me add just one color at a time to the gel plate, but you can definitely add more than one color. On this one, I'm gonna be using the nine by 12, no, 12 by 14. Uh, see these numbers think the bigger plate. And I'm gonna put five different colors on here. All, well, okay, maybe six, I couldn't really stop at five. And what I'm gonna do is brayer this around just like what I did in the other ones. Remember earlier in the video where I said this was a very forgiving process when it came to how much paint to add? That if you didn't add enough paint, you could simply add more? Well, the same is true if you put a lot of paint on there, like I did here. I'm, I'm pretty lead-footed when it comes to paint, so I tend to lean towards the lots of paint side of things. But what's gonna happen here is I'm just gonna get more prints from this because I've got so much paint on here. Again, a very forgiving process, whether you're putting a little paint on there or a lot of paint on there. This gel plate is larger than the paper that I'm gonna be using. And that's okay, because your plate and your paper size don't have to be the same. One can be larger and one can be smaller. And by the way, it doesn't matter which one's bigger and which one's smaller. Now that I've got lots of pattern all over this, it's time to start taking some prints with this. I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I'm just putting it on one side of the plate. So I'm gonna get full coverage edge to edge on this piece of paper. Now there's still plenty of paint on that plate, lots of prints to be taken still. As I put this piece of paper down, I didn't put it down perfectly on there so that it was completely covered. And guess what? You don't have to. You can leave part of the paper hanging off the edge if you want. Now we're getting into the ghost prints. This is where things start to get grungier. There's a little less paint on the plate, but this is when magic starts to happen. Interesting, unexpected things will start showing up in your prints. As long as paint continues to come up on the papers, I'm gonna keep taking pulls. I wanna get every last little bit of colorful goodness that I can. If you're looking for more ideas, more things that you can do with a gel plate, be sure to check out that page of resources over at acolorfuljourney.com. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. Well, thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.